and we would like to have a discussion on the verdict and your thoughts on why people might be surprised, why we weren't expecting this, what does this tell us, what do we need to know, and then as the conversation began, both of you were talking about um, this idea that the, the, the Trayvon Martin case could be a wake-up call or a wake-up reminder to get up. Mm. So first let me ask, what were your initial assumptions once you heard about the murder of Trayvon Martin and the non-arrest of George Zimmerman? Really, um, one more in a long, long, long uh, litany of murder. I mean, you know, go back to New York and Diallo and uh, just we could name them. You know, we know them. Our people know them. Um, the question is, what what does the knowing of them do to the to the consciousness of our people, to the way that we think about the reality in which we live? So it's not like we haven't had, you know, examples. We were there, my granddaughter and I, um, uh, demonstrating about. Um, Troy Davis and I was actually standing across the street from the building in which he was executed that was an incredible uh, feeling but it's not like I didn't know what they were capable of doing I think that that's that's the issue and and also um, what Dr. Welsing has so clearly said to us you know in the past well, my my thought uh, early on, I said that uh, of course I would have wanted him to be convicted, but at the same time, I thought that it would be the system of racism, white supremacy, that was on trial, <laughs> and that we would be fortunate if a verdict demonstrating justice had come down. But if that didn't happen it would just indicate that uh, we were truly in a system of racism, white supremacy, which we have been in. And as you said, uh, all of the other cases where if a black man is killed, then not guilty. You see, over and over and over again. I had also, I don't know what... uh, the statistics would be, but one could question how often in the state of Florida Mm -hmm. has a white man Mm -hmm. been found guilty of killing a black man, Mm -hmm. you see, or certainly throughout the South, or how often have police officers been convicted Mm -hmm. for killing a black man when, you know, the whole idea, I thought he had a weapon. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know what I was reminded of was in New York on the subway there was Bernard Getz was his name right and someone came up to him um, begging I think that was it wasn't that I don't know the details but then he shoot and he killed him and they said that that he was justified in doing that Mm. because he felt threatened Mm -hmm. nobody did anything to him do you see but this is opening the door as many have said any time a white That's right. person wants to walk up and kill a black person, right. all they have to say is, I was threatened. I, felt threatened, I felt threatened, or I was afraid, and so therefore I'm justified. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would just say, out of all of this, first of all, I think that uh, Trayvon Martin is... Um, He's a hero and he's a martyr. And so that his life will not have been taken in vain, then we as black Mm -hmm. people use this, again, opportunity to uh, hopefully, in my view, we have to talk about racism and we have to talk about 
the system of racism, white supremacy, that I say is related to the system was structured consciously, subconsciously for white genetic survival, which necessitates killing black men at will. You see, which is also why the gun is important. The gun is, since the white male cannot cause black males genetic annihilation, then the gun is his weapon to annihilate the black man. And I just say as a psychiatrist, until we can talk about this, and mm-hmm. again, there's the block. Mm-hmm. You see, we're not supposed to be able to talk about racism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, every time you try to talk, it's cut off. It's cut off. That's right. That's and right. it'll be cut off even though everybody is calling for why can't we have a discussion about racism. There will be the attempt to cut it off. And I say we owe it to Trayvon Martin that and his family that we not allow the discussion of racism, white supremacy to be cut off and if the whites don't talk about it, we will talk about it until we have brought the system to an end. It's a, and it's a matter of understanding it and and um certainly there have been uh analyses, explanations. Um talking about racism or what I call white nationalism um, white supremacy thought mm-hmm. uh, g- global white supremacy European world domination um, the thought system that, 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 that underlies that that is the foundation of it and also talking about um, the nature uh, of the white person or the people who as you put it uh, choose to call themselves Classify themselves as white. As white. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I've talked about the the Astili, which is the cultural seed of uh, European culture, um, being needing mm-hmm. to have um, the uh, African black person as a victim, mm-hmm. as an object. Mm-hmm. And that object that you can you can do anything to, you can kill, you can you can do whatever. Um, for one thing, it keeps them from doing it to each other. They need us in order to keep themselves working as a as a, a social structure because it's partly in their nature to destroy themselves. You know, I've talked to groups of white people and raised the question, do you want your children to be colored? Do you want your grandchildren to be colored? Do you want your great-grandchildren, great-great-great? I'm polite and they're polite, and they say no. Do you see what I mean? They Mm -hmm. don't want to not be white. And then I say on a planet where yes, right. nine-tenths of the people That's right. are black, brown, red, and yellow, and they are minority, and where they are genetic recessive compared to our genetic dominance, that if they don't have a total system of control, That's right. do, do you see, then they could experience white genetic annihilation, and they have to be able to kill, which is... Uh, I say why when President Obama was elected and then they had this massive purchasing of guns. Mm -hmm. You see, they even labeled it the Obama effect when they went out and bought all these guns. Even after Sandy Hook, the killing in uh, Connecticut, the people, you would have thought, well, we'll stop guns. Yes, see, because yes, one yes, of their yes. own killed That's right. the 26 children in the school, and they went out again and massively bought guns. And uh, then when the president tries to start talking about gun control, you have, a, again, a massive reaction. You are not going to prevent us from having guns. Do you see? So my thing is that we have to insist upon taking this 
discussion about racism, mm-hmm. you see, to deeper levels as we're talking about it mm-hmm. and, and insisting that it be put on the table. Now, we can't make them talk about it, but we can talk about That's it right. ourselves. In That's other right. words, That's this right. is our narrative. That's right. This is the frame even from the time that Du Bois in 03 what, 110 years ago, saying the problem of the 20th century is the question of the color line. He was talking about racism. And for 500 years, we've been experiencing white supremacy. Mm -hmm. And it's foundational to uh, our total experience. I'm going to be trying to get... Uh, my colleagues in psychiatry to raise questions with the American Psychiatric Association because they've just come out with a new diagnostic and statistical manual, but minimizing racism. Do, Do you see? I mean, racism is a big elephant that is in the room of this entire country and the world. So how can you avoid talking about it, or how can people who pretend that they're supposed to be involved in the mental health of white and black people and not put racism, white supremacy front and center? Well, don't you think, though, that um, the election of um, or selection of uh, uh, Obama would be something which would work in favor of kind of <clears throat> not just minimizing but making invisible a question of racism? Don't you think it could be used like that? You know, that's an interesting question because maybe that was the intent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do, do you see? Because mm-hmm. some of us have been talking about racism. But, okay, so what we'll do is we will put a black man in, and then we can start talking about post-racial or post-racism. And so we can just dismiss it so they won't be talking about our behavior. And quiet us, people like us. Do do you see, and quiet us. Mm -hmm. Do do you see? Or we can even use him. Mm Mm-hmm to be in charge, so to speak, yes. when we are bombing in Africa. Do you see? And yes. destroy, and I say the reconquering of Africa and drones in Africa. And then they can say, well, the black man was That's right. uh, in charge. I remember being arrested in 1954. Mm-hmm. With some white kids, we were going to Mexico. I'm, you know, there were four of us. I'm the only black, and they arrested us in Beaumont, Texas. I mean, what did I know? I thought if we went to a black restaurant, we wouldn't be in trouble. Anyway, the white police came in, and uh, the first thing that this white police officer, after he said, "Are you an American Negro?" <laughs> <laughs> And then he said, I want you to know, one of your own people turns you in. You see, like people in the community. Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, then Mm -hmm. they can say, well, I mean, bombing in Africa and the destruction of Mali. And, well, there was a black president. That's right. That's right. And his father was Kenyan. Do you see? But I say that I think he doesn't really fully realize, in my view, uh, he doesn't really understand what those of us who have been mm-hmm. brought up in this part of the world understand about racism, its depth, do, do you see? And even though he said, you know, we needed to talk about racism in the first primary, he hasn't been able to focus on it or hasn't been allowed to focus on it, or just like the Attorney General, when he said, are we a nation of cowards, being unable to talk about racism, Holder? Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the answer to that is yes, Mm -hmm. but Trayvon gives us an opportunity to bring forth our courage Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and our respect for ourselves as black people that we must talk about 
this dynamic and this force that is on course to destroy us. That's right. You see, and we cannot allow this to happen for ourselves, children, future generations. You know, he's giving us. It's almost like he gave his life life for that. So we can do this. That we can have this. And and I hope that uh, people appreciate, you know, what we can do for uh, Trayvon and that Martin family. Mm-hmm. You see, no, we are not going to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. taken off course from dealing with this critical issue. And you know, I say all the time, we're the parent people mm-hmm. of the mm-hmm. planet. Mm-hmm. We're the parents of everybody on this planet, and and so the house is the planet house is in disarray. And it's going to be in disarray until this monstrous system of terrorism, racism, white supremacy is brought to a halt. Do you see? And it's our responsibility Mm -hmm. to, you know, as black people, to take the leadership and say, no, we're going to have the courage to focus on it and talk about it. And we're not going to let anybody take us off course. You see, and those we have people in our own group who don't want to talk about racism. Right. Well, we're going to have to help them That's elevate right. their level That's right. of self-respect. I mean, it, it, you know, we can't say we have respect for ourselves and our children and our future generations if the force that is trying to destroy us and we decide we're not going to focus on it mm-hmm. or we're going to look at something else or talk about something else. I think I think that we have developed a comfort zone where it's easier not to talk about it. To put our heads in the sand. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And think that we have gained something or enough that let's just be quiet. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yes. And and I think that um, I know that what affected me in terms of my thought, your pointing out that we're talking about a system here. Mm-hmm. It's extremely important. It's not just a matter of how one white person might exactly. feel about you and say bad things about you. Exactly. But we've got to begin thinking much more um, politically, ideologically, is understanding something as a system. Right. You see, which is why it has been able to last That's right. over time. And I say that the system has a logical reason, mm-hmm. you see, deeply mm-hmm. fundamental, mm-hmm. with their genetic survival. Exactly. This is not just something out here That's right. floating. And I had a conversation some years ago with um, Tom Metzger from the Aryan Nations, one of those white supremacist groups. Mm. And we were on the same television program with Ronald Reagan's son out in California when he was briefly a television host. And it was a panel of people talking about racism. He happened to be seated next to me. Mm -hmm. And so during a commercial break, I kind of touched him on his arm and I say, he didn't say, don't touch me, (laughs) so-and-so. He was very polite. And I said, Mr. Metzger, tell me something. What percentage of white people, people who classify themselves as white, are fearful of white genetic annihilation. And he said, Dr. Welsing, nearly all of them, but they are afraid or ashamed to admit it. Now, this is out of the mouth of one of the outspoken white supremacist persons. Nearly all of them. You see, and they would have to be. I mean, the mm-hmm, this is mm-hmm. not our invention mm-hmm. to talk about their minority status. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is reality That's right. on the That's third right. planet from the sun. That's right. It's not something we concoct to talk about our genetic dominance in terms of skin coloration. And we got a president that is the very epitome of that. You see, his mother's white, his father's black, and he's black because of black genetic dominance. These are not facts that we create. 
these are scientific realities. Do you see? So in the presence of this, and I say, you know, like Abraham Lincoln upon the emancipation of the enslaved Africans, he said that he's emancipating them, of course, for, you know, purposes of winning the war, but they cannot be equal. That's right. Because I think he understood, I mean, all the slave owners and the people at that point understood if all of the slaves were emancipated and everybody was equal and nobody paid any attention to skin color, the white people would disappear. There wouldn't be any. Everybody would just be relating, but with black genetic dominance, everybody would be colored. So if they didn't want that to happen, then this is what we have. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask a question. We've talked about um, ending racism, ending the violence against black people, mm-hmm. but we've also tied it to their survival, the survival of people who categorize themselves as white. Mm-hmm. How do we actually end it without ending white people or is the end of whites the end of racism? See, I I use the analogy, you know, let's say there's a group of people. Let's say a group of 50 people, 25 people, and one of the people is a thief. As long as the 50 or 25 other people don't know that person is a thief, then they, oh, my wallet is missing. Where's my purse? Do you you see? But the minute that the thief is identified, then everybody is watching, and the thief cannot function. You see, the person is there, but they are under continuous observation. Do you see? Now, we have the denial of racism, so nobody is looking. But once we identify it, and it's not about hating white people, it's not about mistreating them. It's like Neely Fuller's definition of justice. Justice is no one is mistreated. No one is allowed to be mistreated. And those who need the most help get the most help. You see, so it's not about they have to be destroyed. It's like everybody just has to understand how they have had to maneuver for their survival, which necessitates all the people of color not respecting themselves. See, like, you know, we did a survey all over the world and found out how many people of color would like to be white tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That would be at the 99% level. You know, I say if I invented three pills, one will turn you white tomorrow morning, another one would give you straight hair, and another one would uh, give you so-called white features, and then went on eBay. I'd be richer than Oprah. (laughs) Do do you see? Because, I mean, it's just like all over Asia and all over Africa, people are bleaching their skin. Mm -hmm. So if people could just go on eBay, I mean, that's just the state of where white supremacy after 500 years is indoctrinating and telling people that God is white. And, you know, I mean, so we've all been bamboozled, brainwashed, subjugated. But if we then understand that and, oh, wait a minute, no, we are going to value ourselves as black people. See, if we do it, everybody else, if we start valuing black, valuing ourselves, respecting ourselves second to none, white supremacy will not. See, white supremacy, a minority can control a majority by dividing and conquering. You see, or teaching the teaching us as black people, for example, if you listen to rap and all of the negative things that are on some rap music, and people think that's entertainment, they don't see this is brainwashing. You see, I can make you think about yourself in such a way that if I give you a weapon, you would be willing to kill. Because I've taught you 
to think of yourself. And if you put that on a beat, it's locked into the brain. So I can make you hate each other. I, and I'll pay millions of dollars for somebody to put those kind of messages out. You see, well, once we begin to understand that, and, you know, it's like a lot of musicians have thought, well, take Public Enemy. When Public Enemy did Fear the Black Planet, and they based it on the Crest Theory, I got calls from London, got calls from California. How do they know you? How do you know them? <laughs> do, do you see, I didn't know them. Do you see, but they had put a positive message on, and they knew, wait a minute, if those positive messages or about the reality on the planet, if that gets into the mind of people, we're lost. So what do we do? We can, I mean, it's just like if you look at the black people who were in the civil rights era, and you see them marching against hoses and dogs and bullets and That's right. billy clubs That's and right. the dignity that the people had. That's right. Do, do you see? And so, and out of that came what? Black is beautiful, black pride, right. black power, That's black right. self-respect. Those that I say self-respect is more powerful than a nuclear weapon. <laughs> You see, if people have self-respect, mm -hmm. like I said, the Vietnam War, little tiny brown people. That's right. Impoverished, but they had reached a point with their leadership, if every single one of us has to die, That's you're right. leaving. That's right. You are leaving this country. And the next thing, the people with all the weapons found themselves jumping on helicopters to get out. And they even have seminars to... How did we lose? <laughs> you see, and what they were confronting was the power of self-respect. You know, when you say that and you talked about being convinced of the power of, of your blackness, respecting yourself mm -hmm. is black. Number one, I think about Garvey, because mm -hmm. that's what he said, mm -hmm. and that's what he acted on. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get a response. Mm -hmm. From our people. I mean, like never before. From more people than just, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, and the other thing is, that one of the things that, that I think you point out that's important is how the, the racism becomes um, institutionalized. And mm -hmm. so what we were talking before about the destruction of white people in terms of destruction of racism in their institutions is where they are defining things in such a way that they're up here. They're at the top. Mm -hmm. We're at the bottom. So it happens in the institution itself. So the thing is the control of the, of the, of the institution and the d design of the institution, the purpose of the institution, and that's what they've done, is to, it's to construct an institutional framework which which makes um, a reality of something that is not a reality. They they create a reality in which they are superior. When when we know the, the well, we have to know that the 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 real reality is that that we have this power of blackness and obviously genetic. Um, superiority, you see, but they they institutionalize a, a lie. I think you call it a defensive. Right. Well, see, once once you design a system, it's just like if you use a factory as an, an analogy. You know, okay, let's say Ford factory, and so every department in the factory helps to turn That's out right. the Ford That's automobile. Right. That's, That's right. what a system is. And That's so right. The system has its institutions that carry out the objective of the system. So That's right. as Fuller says, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, those are the areas of people activity that could be broken down into institutions mm -hmm. that help to maintain the power equation of white power over a relative non-white powerlessness. And I just throw in for the purpose of white genetic survival. See, so they are in a very survival, which is why what we see 
by any means necessary. And we're saying, well, why can't we have justice? Yeah. And trying to convince That's right. them That's right. that they ought to sign on to the ideas of Martin Luther King or mm-hmm. Gandhi. You see, but if they are thinking consciously, subconsciously, well, then we we will disappear. See, we we don't even, we can't feel that. I mean, you can't, you know, black people are the white supremacy want to get rid of the color and try to struggle. How do we get, they can't get rid of it. Do, do, do you see? So we don't have any concept mm-hmm, mm-hmm. about genetically disappearing. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can imagine it, but we can't feel it. They can feel it. This mm-hmm. and act on it, but it's our responsibility, like I say, helping them understand. This is which is every time they cut off a discussion about racism. Don't touch that. Don't touch that. Don't go there. Don't explain our behavior. Yeah. <laughs> I remember years ago asking um, a person at the. Uh, National Institutes of Health, can I get a grant to further my studies on white people? <laughs> I mean, I was innocent. <laughs> no, Francis, you have to let white people study themselves. See, because once you study, you know, that's what they say the field of cultural anthropology was to develop, to go all over the non white world and see how the people think and what motivates them. That's right. And then you can destroy them because you Absolutely. found out what they consider to be sacred. Absolutely. You would just have, oh, I know what's in your mind, and so now I can design the disruption That's right. of your thinking, although I'm going in the, let me feed you. That's right. Let me help you. Mm-hmm. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. I'll bring democracy. Right, I'll bring democracy. And Christianity. And, Christianity. and the next thing you know, like, what do the African writers say? Things fall Things apart. Things fall apart. Mm-hmm. Things fall apart. Well, now we are beginning again, thanks to Trayvon, knowing we have to understand in depth. And if we get on that course, you know, we're going to continue to master playing this chess game from the black side of the board, playing defense, offense. Mm -hmm. And we are intending to be victorious. That's right. See, but we have to, we, we really haven't had... Clarity of narrative. That's right. Do you see? So uh-huh. that everybody uh-huh. understands. Now, you never have 100%. Do uh-huh. you see? But we just need a critical mass That's right. moving on an understanding of what is the problem. That's right. And we can't go from. See, it's like every time we react to a death or something, you know, we react. And then we go back. It would be like a doctor treating a symptom. That's right. And never understanding the disease process. I mean, you've got to understand the disease process so that the patient doesn't die. I mean, you can treat symptoms until they do die. You see, so it's appreciating the symptom, but what is, why is this happening? Why did this happen to Trayvon Martin and his family? Did this, or the next, or all of the other cases. I'm going to do the other. We can just go on and on and on and on talking about all the cases where there was supposed justification for the homicide. You see, but until we say, well, why? Why would this be happening? Mm-hmm. And once we understand, oh, See, I say, oh, this is essential for white genetic survival, to kill the source. I mean, the the women are not a genetic threat because women cannot impose sexual intercourse. Do you see, but males can impose sexual intercourse, whether it's a slave master or any other male. That's just fundamental physiology. So 
the male, we can go after. And if we go after the male, then we cause the disintegration of the family. You see, if we go after the male, then the male children don't have models 24-7, and their behavior can become chaotic, Mm -hmm. which is what we have. You see, but if we understand, I mean, it's like I say, black men, you say, okay, how do you play football? Oh, that's where you play it? That's right. Tactics and strategy. That's right. Nobody will play better. That's right. Do you see, I mean, all of that is tactics and strategy. Do you see, and people end up flying through the air. (laughs) Well, with anything else, you know, oh, help us, you know, let us understand. If we can understand, we can deal with it. And this is why. No, race wasn't race. It wasn't race in the trade. Race wasn't a factor. But race was the major factor. Mm -hmm. Just like it is, it's a major. You know, I was saying to somebody, imagine, I mean, it's even difficult to imagine what would each and every single black person be doing if it wasn't race, if it wasn't racism that they had to contend with? Do you see that it's a big block, only so far. You can be president. We'll try to kill you and see that you fail. So what if those blocks weren't there? I mean, people can't even imagine. I mean, I can't imagine what would I be doing. This is, I'm saying, what would anybody be doing? You solving problems in the universe. Let me ask, in the ways that you were talking about genetics, I remember you were also, in your work, you talk a lot about the spirit. Mm-hmm. What is it about us mm-hmm. that is struggling to understand this system and since our survival is predicated on our understanding Mm -hmm. that should be order number one what's preventing us spiritually what are the systems involved in preventing us spiritually I I was going to ask Dr. Welding because I see it as a a serious um, psychological spiritual emotional issue it's almost like the the dealing with talking about racism trying to understand that system so that then we can do the the chess plan you know mm-hmm. um it's almost like avoiding that or or if you do that then you have to take on a responsibility you have to have the courage mm-hmm. to then follow through with what that understanding means and it's and it's to me, it's almost like being in a state of a kind of depression, where you are you're you're in denial. You fear has has is used as a has been used against us as a as a weapon. I know that you know the seasoning process um, that we're told about uh, when they enslaved us um, when they brought us over here to break the will. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering from the point of view of, of psychoanalysis, uh, what, what's it called, historical, there's a field now that talks about historical trauma. Well, no, it, it, it analyzes whole uh, cultures, so to speak, from a, from a you know, um, psychohistorical mm-hmm. um, whether there's there's an effect that that um, has a, a void, the responsibility of answering the call of of, of Trayvon. Mm-hmm. You see, because once you once you know and once you acknowledge it, then you've got to do what Garvey did. You've got to we we. I know. say that we are afraid. Mm-hmm. Do, do you see if this? <laughs> If I had the money, I would. I said this, I remember the first time I said it was in Philadelphia many years ago. 
that there needs to be a national conference. And the national conference will be called by black men, and the conference will be, we are afraid of the white man. See? Just what I'm saying. Do, do, do you see? I mean, and, and you want to see attention? Well, wait a minute. What do you want? What, what, what? No, we're, we're, we are calling a conference to announce that we are afraid of you. Now, see, what is in that is like to be able to, I'm going to confront myself and I'm going to face what I'm afraid of. That takes power. See, and, and so, well, well, what are you going to do about it? Well, right now, we have just been able to articulate our fear. And acknowledge it. That, and uh, we're not certain whether we'll get over our fear, you see, but right away, because the opponent cannot say, I'm afraid of you. Uh-huh. I'm afraid of your genetic power to cause my genetic annihilation. Mm. Do, you, do you see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. no, we're going to have this national conference. Mm-hmm. And you're going to call it? It would be, no, you see, it would be like the men will call it. Do you see? And it would be all kind of my, well, 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 I wonder. (laughs) Like I was involved in a case a long time ago where a black man had decided that he was afraid of, he, well, he was fearful because he was always being stopped, mm-hmm. and he hadn't done anything. Mm-hmm. And so he just said, I'm going to do something mm-hmm. for them to really mm-hmm. address me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he went and shot three big business people in the back of the head. Mm-hmm. So I'm the psychiatrist doing the evaluation, and then at a deposition, one of the white attorneys said, are there any other black men who think like that? Because this man was seated in jail with his jeans pressed and his table, feet up on the table, and says, relaxed, like, I'm fine. So this white attorney said, well, are there any other black men that think like this? And I said, I don't know, but as long as there's racism, there might be. So his response was, this is in the middle of the deep south, how come he just didn't rape a white woman? And leave me, basically. (laughs) And I said to him, do you realize what you're saying? See, why can't he just be satisfied with having a white woman? See, now, if you think about it, I hadn't even thought about it until we're saying that I'm talking right here. This is what is now being offered. That's right. You're right. Do you see? You're yeah. right. Oh, you want to write one? You can do yeah, you, you can, can do that. You, you, hey. That's right. How many do you want? Uh, Tiger Woods, many. But don't. <laughs> hey. Don't kill up. Wait, wait, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. See how many That's people right. have gone into deep pacification. That's right. That's right. With a white woman. That's right. You see, think about all the millions of dollars that are flowing out that they will bring back. Yes. Tiger. Mm-hmm. And and Kanye. Jordan, just Jordan, just Jordan. 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 Mm-hmm. See now, if you think, see that that this is what I say: self-respect will have mm-hmm. that same. Mm-hmm. Do, do you see? Which is why we have uh, a certain percentage of black men, in my view, I don't mind saying it, who look grotesque. Mm-hmm. Do you see? If you look at the magazines and mm-hmm. to check out tattoos all over their face and looking like grimacing monsters. Do you see? It's like destroying the image of self. 
and the respect for self, mm-hmm. which brings me your thing about spirituality. I say to people that the Creator made us black skin. I don't mean modified black, what I call crystal black. Mm-hmm. And because I say the creative force, whatever you label it, That's right. wanted us to be black. We're the mothers and fathers of everything. And when white people start talking about the most powerful things in the universe, it's a black hole or dark matter. So I say the creative force made us black. And so then we're begging the creative force. And the creative force can say, look, I made you black, but you don't want to be black. That's right. So you say, I like, gave you what you need. I, I <laughs> made you, I gave you everything. You know, that story in the Bible about the giving the talents to, you know, and then the person who didn't use what they were given, mm-hmm. they're taken mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. So I say the creative force looks at us, I made you black, and mm-hmm. now you don't want to be black. And I say the black is what built the pyramids. Mm-hmm. See, it's some way to use, like, <laughs> uh, what are the solar collectors? You see those black cells that they transform into electrical energy and all kind of power that you can put on the house or, you know, mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. just flew an airplane powered by solar Mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. coming into those black cells so I say we were given it but then we were captured and told to hate we are taught to hate ourselves mm-hmm. and to hate black and then we want the creative force that made us black to assist us and the creative force is saying I'm waiting <laughs> I'm waiting for you Mm-hmm. to respect what I made. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting. Mm-hmm. You see, now we can begin mm-hmm. to, as I was saying, to turn it around, we can begin to value crystal black mm-hmm. at the highest level. Mm-hmm. That in itself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is going to subdue yes. the yes. force. Yes. Do you see? Yes. What do you mean you put black, black, black at the highest level? That's right. See, they, you know, they say black get back. Brown stick around, yellow, mellow, white, right. And it's not to demean any of the colors. Mm-hmm. All the colors come from us. But crystal black is what they have made us demean. Mm-hmm. And if we can get... If we get on track, you know, like understanding what the big picture is and mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. what can we do? See, I want to have a festival, like a festival, a pageant, and only the really black people Me too. can be on parade. We can do it. Do you see? And if we, and if we did, you see what I'm saying? Yes. It's not putting down any of yes. the colors. Yes. See, there's a there's a passage in the Bible that said the sons of God saw the daughters of man and they were fair. Now, black people are the first people. Those are the sons of God. The daughters of man are albinos. See, God created us as black people. Black people produce mutations, so those are the daughters of man. Those are man-made. Oh, black is, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do see what and you're saying. And this passage in the Bible, you can look it up. You know, I don't really know what. The sons of God saw the daughters of man, and they were fair. That's what the passage says. Hmm. You see, and this is, that's what happened. I mean, you know, we mm-hmm. say that's what happened at some point in the beginning. But, mm-hmm. you know, the bottom line is, can we get into that zone mm-hmm. of uh, really respecting ourselves as black people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at levels that we haven't imagined in 500 years? That's right. If we got into that, because, you know, like, I can see... 
it, like I, these masks, and sometimes I say, well, what do they mean? It's like the dignity that is in those masks. Mm-hmm. You see, like the, the seriousness, like mm-hmm. I can experience the seriousness about self. Mm-hmm. You see, if we can get into that zone, yes. <laughs> I say that's why the white people are, are trying to get to Mars. <laughs> do, do you see, they would be getting on rocket ships. And if they don't get on rocket ships, they will be, you know, like I say, the people who had a grandparent who would just look at you across the room and lift an eyebrow and you got yourself together. That's right. They didn't have to shout or anything. They would just... That's right. Get your act together. <laughs> you see, if we if we ever got on track, that is the way we would be related to by this negative force. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, it would be mm-hmm. serious kindness, but at the same time, not plain. That's right. I think we're gonna have to. Yeah. Because doctor's been wanted, here all day. Yeah, I just wanted to wrap up that one point. Mm-hmm. The other night, you said Trayvon made a call. Mm-hmm. What is that call telling us to do? If you can just give us one. Oh wow! Well. No, I I think that Trayvon is calling us to stand up and, and, and look at this racism thing. Doctor Welvin can is as a the person who issues it issues the call from him. I think a movement will ensue. I think that we have to just say that every time we get a, uh, an opportunity to have an interview, we say the answering Trayvon's call. Yeah. And and Dr. Welsing is articulating that in terms of understanding what this is. Right. It should be no surprise to us, mm-hmm. but we have to deal with that system. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can't it? You know. Don't expect justice in that system not about that. But we are in the business of transforming the most unjust system in the world, the highest form of terrorism. That's Racism right. White supremacy is the highest form of That's terrorism right. that has ever been conceived. That's right. And our mission, our responsibility is to transform that into a system of justice. That's the only way there can be peace. And as Neely Fuller said, and then maybe we can become universal man and universal woman, <laughs> able to relate to other galaxies. But right now, our work is on planet Earth. I want to thank you both, Mama Mirabani, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, um, for this brilliant sharing the thoughts and what we need to understand about the Trayvon Martin case and the verdict of not guilty. Um, and as a student of both of your works, from Uruguru to Let the Circle Be Unbroken to the ISIS papers, um, it's helped us understand what we need to know about white people. And I think in Trayvon's call, we understand that if you're being followed by a creepy ass cracker, you got to end them systems. Trayvon, we hear you. And I think that that Dr. Uh, Wellsing has said something real important, what we need to understand about ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we understand ourselves as as possessing through our relationship, our blood relationship, that that perfect black, that's what um, Asar was called. The Lord of the perfect black. The perfect black. So it's understanding ourselves will help us to know Mm -hmm. what we've got to do in terms of Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. My my absolute pleasure and the honor of being in this office. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm.